how to make your digital notes actionable using Task Clone 2.0. That's what we're talking about today. Hi, this is Frank Buck, and this is the place to be if you want to get organized and make it look easy. Let's start with the principle and move to the tool. When you're on a phone call, in a meeting, or, or in a one-on-one -on -one conference, or in a workshop, or maybe even reading a book, you're taking notes. Maybe the tool is paper, maybe the tool is digital. But in either case, new to-dos are likely to arise. New calendar events may be created. The principle is that the to-dos and appointments go right there in the notes. Do not flip back and forth in a paper planner to add something to a calendar or to-do list. You're introducing drag on your system. You're trying to do multiple things at once. You're introducing time pressure because you're trying to put these things in the right place while you're attending to the meeting or whatever else it is. You've got to word them correctly. You've got to be complete about them while you're also trying to be present where you are. And you're introducing a pretty good chance for error. So what do you do instead? Put those to-dos and calendar events in the body of the notes and put a little checkbox in front of the item and go on with your business. You can be fully present in the meeting knowing that you've trapped these items in your notes. As soon as that meeting or phone call or workshop session's over, you can go straight on to the next thing on your agenda. That's okay. You can be fully present there as well. Now, here's the key. Later in the day, that same day, when the dust settles, and it does at some point in the day, review all the notes you took. Clean up anything that's fuzzy. Look at the to-dos and appointments that you wrote. Are there others that you want to add? Now, enter those tasks on your task list and put the appointments on your calendar. And as you do so, you want to maintain a connection between that to-do or calendar event and the meeting or phone call or whatever where it all originated. Those notes add context. So to link it all together, as you enter the tasks or calendar events in their new homes, in parentheses, put a date, the date that you took the notes. Now you've earned the right to forget about it. When you come upon that task or that calendar appointment days or weeks or even months later, that date inside the parentheses allows you to instantly view the notes. So that's the principle. Now let's look at the tool. I take notes digitally in Evernote. If you do the same or if you use OneNote or Notion, to take your digital notes, and you use a digital task manager and a digital calendar, what I'm going to talk about is very applicable to you. I use a service called Task Clone to automate the process of harvesting the tasks and the calendar events from my notes and putting that information on my digital task list and my digital calendar. We're going to look at each of these scenarios. Number one, how I handle tasks for myself. Second, how I handle events to put on my main calendar. Third, we're going to look at things that I want to put on another calendar that I have. And fourth, we're going to look at tasks that I want to delegate to someone else and how I keep those things from falling through the cracks. And I can do it all without leaving my notes. So during the course of this meeting, I promised Bob that I will give him a call on a particular date about a particular project. So in my notes, here's what I would put. A little checkbox, call Bob. That's all I've got to do. I use Remember the Milk, and that software gives me some special commands where I can put those right there, and it assigns a date and other things when it arrives in Remember the Milk. So perhaps I want to call Bob on May the 7th 
sometime in the morning. And so let's break it down. The carrot symbol in Remember the Milk indicates the due date. So in that task, if I put carrot 5 slash 7, it's going to give it a due date of May the 7th over in Remember the Milk. If I put exclamation 2, that exclamation point indicates the priority level. Now, in my system, I use the priority to indicate what part of the day I want to do the task. Priority one is my fab five, the five most important things for the day. Priority two, tasks for the morning. Priority two, tasks I want to see in the afternoon and no priority. The bottom one is for tasks for the evening. So if I put exclamation two, that indicates that I want to make this phone call to Bob in the morning. The hashtag gives the task a tag. In this case, it's a phone call. I want to call Bob. Now, my today list is automatically sorted so that it shows tasks that are due date of today or overdue. So I never have to rewrite anything. Anything overdue simply moves to the next day automatically. It's sorted by priority. So that automatically puts my morning things together, my afternoon things together, that sort of thing. And then within each priority, it's sorted by tag. See, that arrangement puts all the phone calls that I want to make in the morning right together so I can work through them quickly. The two slashes indicate that I have information that will go in the notes section of the task. Whatever I type after the slashes automatically populates that notes section. Now let's go over to Remember the Milk and see how it looks. I see the task. I see the due date to the right in light gray. A dark blue vertical line to the left is the priority. Red is priority one, dark blue priority two, light blue priority three, and gray is no priority. The task is tagged phone. The three horizontal lines to the right indicate that there's something in the notes section. So let's click the task for more detail. A pane opens, and there you see the attached note. But look at what you see in another attached notes. You have two links. Either one takes me back to the original note where I took notes in Evernote. And this would work the same if you used OneNote or Notion. One link opens the note in Evernote Web. The other opens the note in the Evernote desktop software. Now, back in the days of the paper planner or paper journal, I would have a set of parentheses and a date as part of the task. That date would take me back to my handwritten notes. So you see, this is the digital parallel the difference is how much the automation is doing the work for me. Now let's go back to our meeting notes. In addition to having tasks arise during this meeting, we often have new calendar events created. I handle it much the same way. I put a checkbox followed by the title of the appointment. I put the date in the format mm-dd why, 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 and the starting time of the appointment. Question, how is TaskClone going to know if this is an appointment for my calendar rather than a task for the task list since they both start with a checkbox? Well, that part is made possible by what's called a designation. More on that later. At the end of the appointment, I add the pipe symbol a greater than sign, and the designation I have chosen for calendar items. I chose the letters GC because it makes me think of Google Calendar. Let's add a third item. In addition to my main calendar in Google Calendar, I have another calendar called FYI. It's for events that I'm not attending, but I want to know about them in case I want to go or if it's in some way impacts my day. For example, during the meeting, I learned that there'll be a parade next week and it's going to impact traffic where I work. Well, I want to see that in that FYI calendar. So I simply add a 
designation. In this case, I want the letters FYI, which stands for, uh, you know, for your information. It makes me think, ah, oh, this is going on my FYI calendar. So I put a checkbox. I put what the name of the uh, event is. I put the date and time in the proper format, the pipe sign, the greater than sign, FYI. And I don't have to think about it. It's automatically going to go on my FYI calendar, I'm going to have a link back to the note in Evernote where it was created. All right, now let's look at one more example. I want to delegate a task to someone else, and I'm thinking about that right there during that meeting. Uh, maybe that person uses Evernote. Maybe they don't. Maybe they use Remember the Milk. Maybe they don't. doesn't matter as long as they use a task manager that will allow me to email into that. More on that shortly. So I write a task just as it would be if it was going to appear on my team members list. I put a, uh, a the checkbox that's going to tell task clone that that is something that needs to go somewhere else. I put what the task is. I put the uh, the due date. I put the priority. And now it's going to need its own little designation to go to the right place. In this case, it's uh, it's a teammate whose first name begins with the letter C. So I'm going to choose a designation of RTM for remember the milk and the letter C. So I just have the pipe sign greater than RTM C. And then this is automatically going to go on my teammates, remember the milk. I can assign tasks to as many team members as I wish. I simply have to create a one-time connection and choose a designation for each one of them. Before we talk about setting up connections and designations, let me show you a trick. Every one of these items started with that box. So here's a keyboard shortcut to produce them. Hit the left bracket on your keyboard, hit the right bracket, and hit a space. As soon as you hit that space, the typed brackets form a box. So how do you set up things in Task Clone to make it do what you're seeing here? For that, I'm going to refer you to the body of the blog post, frankbuck.org slash task clone and the number two frankbuck.org slash taskclone2. You'll see the URL to create an account. You'll see screenshots of what my connections look like. All of that's in the body of the blog post. I want to use our time here to stress the need for the basic principle. Be kind to yourself when you're taking notes by putting everything in the notes. Reference information, tasks, and calendar dates go in the notes. Mark your to-dos and calendar events with a box. Let Task Clone handle the automation. You've got a connection between your calendar and your notes and between your task list and your notes. It's that simple. Thanks for stopping by today. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and take a look at these two videos right over here. And subscribe to the channel for more videos so you never miss a thing. This has been Frank Buck, helping you get organized and make it look easy.